I pray now! Keep below! Where is the master, Bosan? Do you not hear him? You are our neighbor! Keep not coming! You do assist the storm! Hey! Join me! Be patient! When the sea is... Remember who the last that Lord! None that I more love than myself! Silence! Trouble us not! Out of our way, I say! My dearest mother, you have put the wild waters in this roar. Allay them. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces. Poor souls, they perished. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell thy piteous heart, there's no harm done. Oh, what the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee. Of thee, my dear one. Thee, my daughter. Who art ignorant of what thou art. Not knowing of whence I am. Nor that I am more better than Prospera. Master of a full poor cell. And thy no greater mother. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. It is time I should inform thee further. So, lie there, my lord. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have with such provision in mine heart so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as an hair, bidded to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst to cry, which thou sawst to sink. Sit down and be attentive. Canst thou Remember a time before we came unto this cell. I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, ma'am, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Of anything the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance. Tis far off, and rather like a dream. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst. And more, Miranda. Twelve years since, Miranda. Twelve years since. 
Thy mother held the dukedom of Milan and its princely power. But are not you, my mother? The very same. Who, long ago, was wife to him who ruled Milan most liberally. Who, with as tolerant a hand toward me, gave license to my long hours in pursuit of hidden truths. Of coiled powers contained within some elements to harm or heal. I brook no interruption but your squalling. For thou, child, art a princess born. Oh, heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence? Upon thy father's death, authority was conferred, as was his will, to me alone, thereby awakening the ambition of my brother and thy uncle, called Antonio. Thou attendest not. Good madam, I do. I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom I did charge to execute express commands as to the prudent governing of fair Milan, instead undid, subverted. Dost thou attend me? Ma, most heedfully. Perverting my upstanding studies now, his slandering and bile-dipped brush did paint a faithless portrait. His sister, a practiser of the black arts, a demon, not a woman, nay, a witch, and he full, knowing that others of my sex have burned for no less. The flames now fanned, my counsellors turned against me, dost thou hear? Your tale, ma'am, would cure deafness. To credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the Duke. Confederates with the King of Naples, to give him annual tribute, and bend my dukedom yet unbowed to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! Now, the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me, inveterate, hearkens to my brother's suit, which was that he should presently eradicate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Milan with all its honours upon my brother. Whereon, one midnight, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, into the dead of darkness his ministers for the purpose hurried thence, me and thy crying self. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Dear, they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me. In few they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to see where they'd prepared a rotten carcass of a boat. Not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it, and there they hoist us to cry to the seas that roared to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, a cherubim thou wast, that did preserve me. Thou did smile, infused with a fortitude from heaven that raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity did give us, with rich garments, stuffs and necessaries, which since have steadied much. Of his gentleness, Knowing I loved my books, he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever see that man. I pray you, ma'am, for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea storm. By accident most strange, bountiful fortune now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. Here, see some more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come. I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come. Grave day, hail, 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 hail. I come to 
answer my best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding, task Ariel, and all his quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to the point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article I boarded the king's ship. Now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yay, his dread trident shake! My brave spirit! Who was so firm, so constant that this coil could not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty! And all the devils are here! Why, that's my spirit! But was not this nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they Ariel safe? Not a hair perished. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And, as thou badest me in troops, I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs, in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting, his arms in this sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed. Safely in harbour is the king's ship. In the deep nook, there she's hid. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who with a charm I have left asleep. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. Oh, at least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which has not yet performed me. How now? Moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty! Before the time be out, no more! I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost? I do not, ma'am. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch, Sycorax? Hast thou forgot her? <clears throat> no, ma'am. Thou hast? Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Ma'am, in Algiers. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been which thou forgetst. This damned witch, Sycorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorcerers terrible to enter human hearing from Algiers thou knowest was banished. Is not this true? Aye, ma'am. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant. But for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, she did confine thee into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there. Thou best knowst what a torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will render an oak and peg thee in his knotty entrails, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command, and do my spiriting gently. Do so. And after two days, I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go. 
Make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine or mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart. Awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on. We'll visit with Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, ma'am, I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetches in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What ho! Slave! Caliban! Thou earth thou, speak! There's wood enough with thee! Come forth, I say! I must eat my dinner. There's other business for thee! Come thou, tortoise, when? Poisonous slave got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam. Come forth! <clears throat> this wicked dew as heir, my mother, brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fan. Drop on you both. A southwest blow on ye and blister you all over. For this, be sure tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pin thy breath up. Urchin shall work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees at maidem. This island is mine! By Sycorax, my mother! which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and made much of me. Wouldst gave me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, Barren place and fertile. Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was my own king. And here you sty me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave whom stripes may move not kindness. I have used thee with humane care, lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. <laughs> Would it had been done? Thou didst prevent me, I had peopled else this isle with Caliban. Abhorrent slave, which any print of goodness will not take. I pity thee took pains to make thee speak. And you taught me language. And my prophet is, I know how to curse the Red Plague. Rage you for learning me your language. Tag seed hence. <sighs> Fetch us in fuel. Shrugs thou malice. If thou neglects or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps. Fill all thy bones with eggs. Make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. Must obey her heart is of such power. So, slave, hence.
I have followed it, or it has drawn me rather, but it is gone. Now it begins again. Remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. curtains of thine eye advance and say, say what thou seest, John. What is it? A spirit? No child. It eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have, such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Oh, spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. I'm not sure the goddess on whom these heirs attend. That safe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I did last pronounce, oh, you wonder. If you be made or no. No wonder, sir. But certainly a maid. My language. Heavens. I am the best of them that speak this speech. Where I've it where it is spoken. Thou the best. What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself am Naples, with mine eyes, never since at ebb, beheld the king, my father, wrecked. Alack, for mercy. Yes, faith in all his lords. At first sight they have changed eyes. Oh, delicate arrow, I will set thee free for this. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word! Why speaks my mother so ungently? 
This is the second man that I saw, the first that I, I sighed for. They are both in either's powers. But this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light the winning make the prize light. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not. And have put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me, the sovereign aunt. Oh, as I'm a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. Follow me. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Follow. No, I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear mother. Make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What? I say my foot, my tutor. Put thy sword up, traitor. For I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, mother. Hence hang not upon my garment. Mom, have pity. I'll be his surety. Silence! One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. Thou thinks there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish child. To the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, and all this dame's threats to whom I am subdued are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid. All corners else of the earth, let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. It works. Come on! of a better nature, sir, than she appears by speech. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds. Then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. Beseech you, sir. Be merry. You have cause, so have we all, of joy. For, for our escape is much beyond our loss. But for the miracle, I, I mean our preservation, few in millions can speak like us. Then wisely, good sir, wear our sorrow with our comfort. Pretty peace. He receives comfort like cold porridge. Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it will strike. Sir, one <laughs> tell. When every grief is entertained that's offered, comes to the entertainer. A dollar? Dola comes to him indeed. You have spoken truer than you purposed. You have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord. Fie, what a spin-trip is he of his tongue. I pretty spare. Well, I have done. But yet, he will be talking. <laughs> Though this island seemed to be desert, <laughs> uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yes. Yet, I could not miss it. The air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs. And rotten ones. Or as to a perfumed by a fan. Here is everything advantageous to life. True save means to live. Of that there's none. Or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. Hmm? How green. The ground indeed is tawny. <laughs> With an eye of green in it. <laughs> but the rarity of it is 
which is indeed almost beyond credit, that our garments, being as they were, drenched in the sea, are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Africa. In, in, in Tunis. You know, at the marriage of your fair daughter Tarabel, uh, to the ki ki king of Tunis. You cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there. For coming thence, my son is lost. And in my rage, she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I never again shall see her. Oh, thou, mine heir of Naples and Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. I not doubt he came alive to land. No. No, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss that would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African. Prithee, peace. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the lost. My Lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness. You rub the saw when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most like a surgeon. <laughs> Tis foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Infections that the sun sucks up from bugs, fens, flats, and prosper for and make up by each other. My spirit hear me. And yet I need most curse. But for every trap war that's set upon me. Sometimes like apes that mole <laughs> and chatter at me when after bite me. Then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot way and mount the pricks at my footfall. Sometimes in my whole wound. With the idols, with cloven tongues to hence me into madness! Ah! Ah! of hers and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat. A chance they would not mind me. This shit anymore. anybody. Neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all, and another storm brewing. I hear it sing in the wind. Yon same black cloud. Yon huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. Gut puck. If it should thunder, as it did before. I know not where I'd hide me head. John St. Cloud cannot choose but fall by pale force. Hey, oh, whoa, 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 What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? A fish. He smells like a fish. A very ancient fish-like smell. Strange fish. 
Were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fall there, but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man where they will not give a penny to relieve a lame beggar. They will lay out ten to see a dead Indian. Legged, like a man, and his fins, like arms. Warm! Oh my trough! I do now let loose my opinion, hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that have lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter here about. <gasps> Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. <gasps> The master, the swabber, the boatswain, and I, the gunner and his mate, love more Meg and Marion and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate, for she had a tongue with a tang, would cry to a sailor, go hang. She loved not the savour of tarn or of pitch. Yet, oh fuck! <laughs> Yet a tailor might scratch her where she did itch. Then to see boys and let her go hang. Then to see boys and let out. This is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. <clears throat> well, here's my comfort. What's the matter? Have we devils here? Do you put tricks upon us with savages and men of Indy, huh? I have not escaped drowning to be afeard now of your four legs. The spirit torments me! Oh. Oh, There's some monster of the isle with four legs who have got as I take it an ague. Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief, if it be but for that. If I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, he's a present for any emperor. Oh, do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. <laughs> he shall taste of my bottle. Come on your ways. <laughs> Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you, and that soundly. <laughs> you cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. Oh, I should know that voice. It should be. But he is drowned. And these are devils! Oh, defend me! Four legs and two voices, a most delicate monster. Come. <laughs> oh, man. I will pour some in thy other mouth. Deaf enough. <laughs> Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is a devil and no monster. I will leave him. Deaf enough. If thou be a Stefano, touch me and speak to me. Be not afeard. For I am Trinculo, my good friend, Trinculo! If thou beest Trinculo, come forth! I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. Thou <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 art very Trinculo indeed. 
How came Stout to be the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Drinkula? I, I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke, but art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm. And art thou living, <laughs> Stefano? <laughs> Stefano too! <laughs> Neapolitan <laughs> skate! <laughs> uh, really, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. <sighs> These be fine things, and if there be no sprites, that's a brave god, and bears celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How didst thou escape? Well, how camest hither? Yes. Swear by this bottle, how well, thou camest hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack, which the sailors heaved o'er board. I swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Yes, yeah, swear by this bottle how thou escapest. Swam ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Yeah, kiss the book. Mm. Mm. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. Mm. Oh, Stefano, is there any more of this? The whole butt, man. How now, moon calf? How does thine ague? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. Come, swear to that. Kiss the book, swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him. A very weak monster. The man in the moon, a most poor, credulous monster. <laughs> I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot. I prithee, be my god. Come on, then. Down and swear. <laughs> I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster, a most scurvy monster. I could find it in my heart to beat him. <laughs> oh, but that the poor monster's in drinks. Come, kiss. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. Hmm? I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. And bring upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear her no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. Most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I pray thee, let me bring thee where crabs grow. And I, with my long nails, will dig the pignuts. Show thee Jay's nest and instruct thee how to snare the nimble mamuzettes. I'll bring thee to clustering field birds. And sometimes I'll get thee young scamels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I pray thee now lead the way without any more talking, Trinculo. The king and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Farewell, master! Farewell! Farewell! Holy <laughs> monster! A drunken monster! No more dams are made for fish! No fetching, firing, act requiring! No scrap, twin, chart, no wash dish! Man, man, Caliban! Has a new master! Get the new man! Freedom! Heide! Heide! Freedom! Freedom! Heide! Heide! Freedom! Oh, brave monster, lead the way!
This is my main task. It'd be as heavy to me as odious. But the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. She is ten times more gentle than her mother's craft. And she's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up on a soaring junction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget. These sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors. Most busiest when I do it. Oh. Alas, now pray you, what not so hard? I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you were enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns, it will weep for having wearied you. My mother is hard at study. Pray now, rest yourself. She's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I should discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray give me that. Oh, carry it to the pile. No, oh, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back. Then you should such dishonor in the girl while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease. For my goodwill is to it, and, and yours it is against. <sighs> you look wearily. No, oh, noble mistress. This fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my mother. I have broke your eyes to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration. Worth what's dearest to the world. Poor worm. Thou art infected. This visitation shows it. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard. Many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women. Never any was so full soul. But some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you. Oh, you. So perfect and so peerless are created of every creature's best. I know only one more of my sex, no young woman's face remember. Save from my glass, mine own, nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend. Our features are abroad, I am skillless of, but by my modesty. I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of. But I prattle something too wildly, my mother's precepts I therein do forget. I am in my condition of Prince Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service. There resides, to make me slave to it. And for your sake am I this patient log man. Do you love me? Oh heaven, oh earth. Bear witness to this sound. I, beyond all limit of what else of the world, do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool. To weep at what I am glad of. Wherefore weep you? At mine unworthiness, which dare not offer. To give and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself, the bigger bulk it shows. And special cunning, and prompt me plain and holy innocence. I am your wife, if 
you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then. I, with a heart as willing as bondage ere freedom. Here's my hand. And mine. Thousand, thousand. I had had I plantation on this isle, my lord, and were the king on't, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. <laughs> no occupation, all men idle, all. And women too, but innocent and pure, no sovereignty. Yet he would be king on't. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. <laughs> nature, nature, without sweat or endeavor would bring forth of its own kind all poison, all abundance to feed my innocent people. <laughs> No marrying among your subjects. None, man. All idle, whores and knaves. Ah, I would with such perfection govern, sir, as to excel the golden age. <laughs> God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. <laughs> and <laughs> do, you, do you mark me, sir? Prithee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe, your majesty, um, and did it to uh, minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. <laughs> who in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you, so you may continue and laugh at nothing still. Oh, what a blow was there given? <laughs> Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, no, I warrant you, I, I, I would not adventure my, my discretion so weak, weakly. Will you laugh me to sleep? I'm very heavy. Ah. Go sleep and hear us. What? So soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. Oh, I find they are inclined to do so. Do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Oh, wondrous heavy. Oh. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why does it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. And yet, methinks, I see it in thy face what thou shouldst be. The occasion speaks thee. And my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do. And surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speaks out of thy sleep. <laughs> what is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose. To be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving. And yet, so far to sleep. Noble Sebastian, thou let thy fortune sleep. Die, rather. Winks twas thou art waking. That was snore, distinctly. There's meaning in my snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me. Which to do troubles the oar. Well, I am standing water. <laughs> 
I'll teach you how to flow. Do, sir. To ebb, hereditary sloth instructs me. Thus, sir, although this lord hath here almost persuaded the king his son's alive, tis as impossible that he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? No hope that way is another way, so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a week beyond but doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. She that from whom we all were sea swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny, to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, what to come in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? Say this were death that now hath seized them. Why, they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Oh, that to bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your sister Prospera. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me. My sister's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience. I, sir, well lies that. Twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Milan. Can it be they and melt ere they molest? Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like that's dead, whom I, with his obedient steel, three inches of it can lay to bed forever, whilst you are doing thus to this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not upbraid our course. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou gotst Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. And draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall upon Gonzalo? Just preserve the king? Why, how not? Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls, or rather lions. Did not wake you. It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, twas a den to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. I heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming which did awake me. Has mine eyes opened? I saw their weapons drawn. It is best we stand upon our guard, or that we quit this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground. Let's make further search for my poor son. Lead away. Now Prospera shall know what I have done. So King goes safely on to seek thy son. You're blind drunk. Tell not me. When the butt is out, we will drink water, not a drop before. Therefore, bear up and board them. Servant monster, drink to me. <laughs> Servant monster? The folly of this island. Oh. They say there is but five upon this isle. We're three of them. If the other two be brain like us, the stake totters. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life, if thou beest a good Mooncalf. How does thy honor? <laughs> Let me lick thy shoe. I'll not serve him 
He's not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster. Why thou deboshed fish thou? Will thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? Oh, how he mocks me. Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord, quote he, that a monster should be such a natural. No, no, again. Bait him to death, I pray thee. Drink your low, keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutiny act, the next tree. The poor monster's my subject, and he shall not suffer in dignity. I thank my noble lord. <sighs> Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? But marry, will I? Kneel and repeat it. I will stand, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorceress, that by her cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest! Thou liest! Thou dusty monkey, thou! I do not lie. Dracula, if you trouble him any more in his tail, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. Why? I said nothing. Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery, she got this isle. From me, she got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on her, thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. Now, now shall this be compassed. Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I yield her thee sleep where thou mayst knock a nail into her head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pied mean is this, thou scurvy patch. I do beseech thy greatness. Give him blows and take his bottle from him. W why? What did I? I did nothing. I'll go farther off. Didst thou not just say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take now that. Uh, As you like this, give me the lie another time. Why? Why? I did not give the lie. Out of thy wits and bearing to a pox on your bowl and the devil take your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> now. Forward with your tail. I prithee, stand farther off. Proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with her in the late afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain her, having first seized her books, or with a log batter her skull, or pot her with a stake, or cut her weasel with a knife. Oh, but remember first to possess her books. For without them she is but as sot as I am, nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate her as rootedly as I burn but her books. And the most deeply to consider is the beauty of her daughter. Of women I've seen with these and Sikorax, madame. But she has far surpassed Sikorax, as greatest as least. Is it so brave, alas? I know. She will become that bad, I warrant, and bring thee forth a brave brood. Monster, I will kill this witch. <laughs> and her daughter and I will be king and queen. And Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like this plot, Trinculo? Excellent. Give me thy hand. Uh, I'm sorry I beat thee. Within this half hour will she be asleep, 
Well, because I'll destroy her then. Aye. On mine honor. This will I tell my master. Thou makes me merry. I am full of pleasure. Come on, Trinculo, let us sing. Flout them and scout them. Scout them and flout them. Thought is free. Grog them and flog them. Flog them and flog them. Thought is free. Stab them and stab them. Stab them and nab them. Thought is free. Bang them and hang them. Hang them and bang them. Thought is free. Fly them and fly them. Fly them and fly them. Thought is free. What is this saying? If thou beest a man, show thyself. Oh, forgive me, my sins. Oh, mercy upon us. Art thou feared? No, monster, not I. Be not feared. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears. And sometimes voices that if I then had waked after a long sleep will make me sleep again. And then in dreaming the clouds me thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that when I waked to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospera is destroyed. I reckon. I can go no further, sir. I needs must rest me. Old Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness. Yes, sit down and rest. He is drowned, whom thus we stray to find. And the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Oh, well. Let him go. I am right glad that he's so out of hope. The next advantage will we take thoroughly. Let it be tonight. What harmony is this, my good friends? Hark. Marvelous, sweet music. Give us kind keepers, heavens. A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? Oh. We have stomachs. Wilt please you taste of what is here? Faith, sir, you need not fear. I will stand to and feed. Although my last, no matter. Since I feel the best is past. You are three men of sin. Whom destiny hath caused to belch up you. And on this island, where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. You fools! I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds as diminish one Tao that's in my plume. But remember, for 
that's my business to you. That you three from the land did supplant good Prospera. Her and her innocent child. For which foul deed the powers delaying not forgetting have incensed the seas and shores. Yea, all the creatures against your peace. The of thy son, Alonzo, they have bereft. And you pronounce by me lingering perdition. Shall step by step attend you and your ways. Bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel. My high charms work. And these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous. Monstrous. Methought thought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me. And the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass. Therefore my son in the ewes is bedded. And I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded. And with him there lie mudded. With one feet at a time, I'll fight their legions all! I'll be thy second! All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison, given to work a great time after, now begins to bite the spirits. I shall follow them swiftly, and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke them to. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a third of mine own life. Or that for which I live. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love. And thou hast strangely stood the test. O oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast of her. For thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against an oracle. Then, as my gift, and thine own acquisition worthily purchased, take my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin knot before all sanctimonious ceremonies, no sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, the strongest temptation shall never melt mine honor into lust. Fairly spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, Monster? Good, my lord. Give me thy favour still. I but to lose our bottles in the pool. There is not only disgrace and dishonour in that monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wetting. Yet all this is your harmless fairy, monster. Uh, uh. What, Ariel? Uh. My industrious servant. Ariel! What would my potent master? Here I am. Go. Bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power, here to this place. Incite them to quick motion. 
for I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Aye, with a twinkle. Before you can say, come and go. Do you love me, master? No? Dearly, my delicate Ariel. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and dear, your true love's coming That can sing both high and low Trip no further, pretty sweeting Journeys end in lovers meeting Every wise man's son must know What is love, tis not hereafter Present mirth at present laughter Words to come is still unsure In delay there lies no plenty Then come kiss me sweet and twenty Youth's a stifled man And Thou be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rain. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire of the blood. I warrant you, madam, the white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardor of my liver. Well. <laughs> no tongue, all eyes be silent. that works so strongly. Never till this day saw I her touched with anger so distempered. You do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits. And melted into air. Into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, and all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I... I am vexed. 
If you be pleased, retire unto my cell and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We wish you peace. peace. Come with a sword. I thank the Ariel come. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I, my commander. Say again, where didst thou leave thee, varlet? I told you, ma'am. They were red hot with drinking. I left them with the filthy mantle pool beyond your cell. There, dancing up to the chins, that the foul lake outstunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. The trumpery in my house, go put it out for stale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. Devil, born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains, humanely taken, all, all lost, quite lost. I will flay them all, even to roaring. Pray you, tread softly, we now are near her cell. Oh, no, no, no. Pretty, be quiet. She is now here. This is the mouth of this cell. Give me thy hand. I begin to have bloody thoughts. King Stefano, oh worthy Stefano, look at what wardrobe is here for thee! Let it alone, thou fool! It is but trash! Oh! Oh, monster! We know what belongs to a frippery! Oh, King Stefano! Ah, oh, put off that gown, Trinculo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it! <laughs> oh! oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I look a dream, don't I? Oh, how could it be real? Oh! Yeah? Oh. Looking for Bisley, Scavner? <laughs> what do you mean to do with us on such luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. Be you quiet, monster. <laughs> Mistress Lion, is not this my jerkin? <laughs> <laughs> Do, do, we steal by line and level, and like your grace. <laughs> I thank thee for the jest. Here's a garment for it. Which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Monster, come put some lime on your fingers and away with the rest. I will have none on it. We shall lose our time and all return to barnacle. Monster, lay on your fingers, or I'll turn thee from my kingdom. Go to, carry this. And this. I earn this. Hey, Martin Fury! Fury! There, Tyrant! There! <laughs> Hunted soundly at this hour lie at my mercy all mine enemies. Now does my project gather to a head. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air at freedom.
say, my spirit? How fares the king and his followers? Just as you left them. All prisoners, ma'am. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted. But chiefly, him that you termed ma'am, the good old lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them, that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine word, master. Were I human? And mine shall. As thou, which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, be kindlier moved than thou art? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They, being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break. Their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, ma'am. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune and then do fly him when he comes back, you demi puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, whereof the you not bites, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azured vault set roaring war to the dread rattling thunder have I given fire and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt, the strong-based promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers oped and led them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my boy.
understand, for you are spell stopped. Oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal sir to him you followest. I will pay thy graces home, both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonso, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a furtherer in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood. You, brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse from nature, who with Sebastian would here have killed your king. I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Her understanding begins to swell. Fetch me the skirt and bodies from my cell. I will disgrace me and myself present as I was sometime, Milan. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. shall miss thee, Ariel. But yet thou shalt have freedom. So. 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 Behold the wronged Duchess of Milan, Prospero. I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou beest she or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends, with which I fear a madness held me. This must crave, and if this be at all, a most strange story. Thy like duke to my resign. And do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospera be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, oh. whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Oh. Whether this be or be not, I'll, I'll not swear. Welcome, my friends all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I could here pluck down his highness frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in her. No. For you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest prosper, give us particulars of thy preservation, how thou hast met us here, who three hours since were racked upon this shore where I have lost my dear son, Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir, for I have lost my daughter. Daughter? When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. But howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospera. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. I pray you, look in. Sweet lord, you play me false. Oh, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle. And I would call it fair play. 
If this prove a vision of the island one dear son, shall I twice lose? Oh, the seas threaten their merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise, and say how thou camest here. I wonder how many goodly creatures are there here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in. It is new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal, but by immortal providence she's mine. I chose when I couldn't ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. Give me your hands. Be it so. Amen. Wast well done? Then here's a goodly sight. Oh, such a boys, this be brave spirits indeed. How oh, fine my master is. I'm afraid she will chastise me. <laughs> what things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy them? Very like. One of them is a plain fish and no doubt marketable. <laughs> these three have robbed me and have plotted together to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness, I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. Is not this Stefano, my drunken butler? And Trinkolo is reeling ripe. How camest thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that I fear me it will never out me bones. What? Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, touch me not. I am not Stefano, but a cramp. And you'd be king of the isle, Sarah. I should have been a sore one then. This is a strange thing as that I looked on. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drug for God and worship this dark fool. Go to away. Well, hence and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, and in the morn, I'll bring you to your ship and so to Naples, where I have hoped to see the nuptials of these, our dear beloved, solemnized. And thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. Thy charge, 
then to the elements be free. Whether be success or kind, in a cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry. On a bat's back I do fly. After summer, after summer, merrily, merrily, merrily shall I live now. Under the blossom that hangs on the bough. Yeah. 
As you from 